Welcome to How I Raised It, the podcast that goes behind the scenes with entrepreneurs who've raised capital. We uncover the tips, tricks, and techniques they use to get investors to write a check. Strap in and turn it up. Hi, welcome to another episode of How I Raised It, produced by Foundersuite.com. Today I have Chathan and Akshay of Alma Campus coming to us from San Francisco. How's it going, guys? It's going well. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. Well, thanks so much for doing this. Happy Friday. Let's just start off. What is Alma Campus? Where do you guys do and, and where'd you come up with the idea? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so Alma is a college-exclusive social network um, that documents the academic profiles of thousands of college students, uh, empowering them to discover, connect with peers on their campus, make better decisions uh, related to their academics, and explore new opportunities. Um, basically, you can imagine a LinkedIn, but with all the information that students want to see, uh, ranging from their courses to their clubs to their uh, academic interests and maybe the places they go to on campus. Um, I think students really love the platform because it's not diluted with irrelevant profiles um, like other networks. The people they see on the platform are the same people they're seeing every day, like in their dorm and their classes and their clubs. Um, Chaitan and I, so we started this, uh, we co-found this last year uh, because we faced a lot of the problems that we saw um, in the college system. So um, Chaitan's a TA, uh, I'm a, a residential assistant, uh, and we're club leaders and class officers, and we spend a lot of time helping students try to find their place in the college environment. Uh, so launching Alma at Stanford was a solution to a problem we faced, um, like trying to figure out who's in a certain class or an organization that you can work together with, um, trying to meet new people, uh, as well as trying to find meaningful communities uh, in your university. Uh, so yeah, we launched this at Stanford and saw a lot of traction and really excited for where it's going. Are you guys students now or did you recently graduate or, or what? Yeah, so we're actually both rising uh, seniors at Stanford. We study computer science. So before working on Alma, we were kind of finishing, finishing up our degrees, uh, taking a few AI courses. Um, and yeah. Fun. Um, I mean, I, you know, it's, it kind of invites the obvious comparison to Facebook's early days. Do you, do you guys get that a lot? And, or is it kind of, I don't know. What do yeah, you, yeah. We, we get that uh, actually almost every time we describe this platform. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, early Facebook did a little bit of the stuff. Um, you know, a lot of students loved it because it was college exclusive. Um, they had some information like your classes and, um, you know, Facebook evolved to sort of get more and more people on board, but that initial use case was still really powerful. And I think that that's why Chet and I saw a lot of value in building Alma. Yeah, interesting. And, and do you, you know, this is obviously probably a question you can't answer, but do you think you will or can stay exclusive to colleges? Or do you think, you know, this is just the next Facebook? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of value in being exclusive to a smaller population. And that's actually why a lot of our users are, you know, shifting towards our platform because they believe that, you know, they'd much rather post to a smaller group of people that they actually encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. So we want to stay exclusive for, you know, essentially as long as possible. But we do also see a potential option to transfer into alumni networks and communities, which would also maintain that idea of exclusivity in that uh, people would still be connected to their alma mater, which is essentially the basis for our name. Uh, but we do think that keeping it within a community is the best option for us. Yeah, good. So, and it looks like if you wrote websites of today, it's 11 or so schools. Is that are up about right or, or more than that? Uh, sorry, repeat the question. Oh, it looks like if, if your website's up to date, it's about 11 schools are on the platform. <clears throat> so not yet. So actually we're, we're just at Stanford, but the goal is in the next month to launch at Cal and USC and by September to launch at all the UC schools, which is 10 schools. Um, so we're working really hard to get to that goal. Gotcha. And do you think is, is this, does this stay limited to kind of top schools or, or do you envision this to be all schools? Uh, right. Know? So I mean, yeah, our vision is to be the go-to social academic platform for any college student who goes to any different school. And uh, I think at first, what we're really focusing on is getting a lot of the schools close to us, you know, so Berkeley and USC, both of those are located in California. A lot of them have, you know, a very large student body where something like this is really necessary. So we're, you know, finding product market fit there. We're talking to a lot of people in our networks who go to these schools and want to help promote this. Uh, but yeah, I mean, after we establish our presence at a lot of these schools in state and slowly expand out of state, we're definitely going to try to hit every school in the nation. 
Interesting. And so I guess you're gearing up for, for fall back to school. And I think I saw a job posting for some brand ambassadors or something like that. Is there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, the fall is like the huge time period for us because students are really excited to go back to school. They want to meet more people. They want to sign up for a platform like this. Um, so we're going to use that to sort of build on the excitement for Alma. And uh, along with that is the, uh, the idea of brand ambassadors. Um, we are currently interviewing lots of campus ambassadors. So we did a nice publicity push last week where we had some people write about our seed round um, and a lot of people reached out to us. So we got contacted by students from over 15 universities, you know, people from Duke to NYU uh, to a lot of the UCs and these people want to be campus ambassadors for us. So we're building out that program. Do you have to give them a little bit of equity or can you just pay them? Campus ambassadors, I think uh, we're trying to create some sort of incentive for them that isn't directly money. I think college students don't find a lot of value in that exactly, but what they do like representing is, you know, the brand. So a lot of campus ambassador programs will, you know, give them a lot of swag, like t-shirts and Patagonias and cool jackets. I think that's what we want to try to promote because, you know, every time they wear some of that apparel, it also spreads our brand name. Uh, and that way we also don't have to like pay in. I don't think we're going to consider the option of giving them equity. <laughs> yeah, we'll save that for <laughs> our employees. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting for sure. Uh, well, that's exciting. And what's the most common, you know, use case or what, what's the most common activity on the platform right now? What are people doing? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think the biggest thing people were using it for was just um, searching others. So we had over 16,000 search queries and they're just trying to figure out really who is in this course or class that I can meet with and become friends with. Um, you know, there's some classes at Stanford that have over a thousand people. So um, it's really a big need on a college campus. It, okay. Last question. Cause we do want to shift to fundraising, but right. it, um, you know, you mentioned searching other people is the most common thing. Is it always going to be, you know, Stanford students interacting with other Stanford students or is there sort of cross pollination between schools? Like, yeah, so actually we're launching a new version of our platform and a lot of that is going to involve, uh, you know, reaching out to people in other schools as well. So we're actually opening up, uh, you know, the nature of the platform to allow for cross school interactions. We still think and we do anticipate that most of the search queries, most of the interactions based on, you know, the live feed and the communities you're a part of are going to be restricted within your school because, you know, those are the people you see on a day to day basis. However, we did think about the use case in which you do want to contact someone from another school. Maybe you're in a, uh, a sibling chapter of a club at the other school and we think that there could be a lot of utility in that so opening up that network and allowing for that channel to communicate within schools is you know one thing that could provide a lot of value <laughs> to our users so we're going to start experimenting with that uh when we launch okay interesting all right and how long have you guys been around when did you start so we officially uh i guess launched um january of this year um so we've been around for i guess seven months or so now mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, yeah. let's get to the money. Um, so how much have you guys raised and over how many rounds? I've, I've checked it out on PitchBook, but I'd love to hear it from you guys. Yeah, for sure. So we, uh, so we initially raised pre-seed money um, from Rough Draft Ventures. Um, so we raised 25K. That was, it helped us a lot with covering server costs and um, you know, getting us off the ground. Um, but from there, you closed our seed round um, last month, which was super exciting. We raised a million dollars. Um, um, <clears throat> on a six cap, so on a $6 million valuation. And the people involved in the round were uh, Norwest Ventures and Felicia's Ventures. Um, and <clears throat> the uh, angels were Marissa Mayer, um, and the Marissa Mayer BB Goal, who is early growth at LinkedIn, and Sergio Monsalve, who was a board member at Udemy. <clears throat> a board member where? At Udemy. Oh, sure, yeah. And, yeah, and Marissa is uh, the CEO of Yahoo. I mean, most people know who that is. Yeah. Um... <laughs> fascinating so okay so t t let's rewind a little bit so how did you put together this round you, you guys said all right did you know did you guys announce and investors kind of flock to you or do you say all right let's go raise money let's put together our dream list executives from linkedin stuff like that or you know how'd you put this together 
Yeah, so uh, actually throughout the entire year, uh, when we started building on this, we were actually in close communication with uh, Parker Barrel from Norwest Ventures. Uh, you know, he actually is actually a scout for the Norwest program at Stanford. So he spends a lot of time, you know, talking to both ends and finding entrepreneurs on campus. So we got a few meetings with Parker and he really enjoyed the projects that we were working on, uh, you know, especially like the the idea of being able to look up people and view their academic profiles so we spent a lot of time with him in terms of you know figuring out the direction we wanted to go from there uh and then around you know march april of 2018 uh parker approached us and he said hey you know it'd be great to officially fund you in a round because at that point we had gone through several programs like the pair vc startup garage at stanford cardinal ventures which is stanford's accelerator along with getting some pre-seed funding from rough draft ventures uh so parker was ready to take on the seed round and he wanted to lead it and we really liked him we thought he could add a lot of value so we immediately said yes to that and then we spent the rest of our time finding other firms and angels to fill up the round uh, and that's kind of how it went. We didn't really anticipate that we were going to raise a seat, but because he wanted us to, and it seemed like he had a lot of value to offer, we decided it was probably the right time to go ahead and do it. Great. So you had Norwest leading it. And then uh, did he help you, you know, cause these are some amazing names, right? Marissa Mayer. These are, did, how did you get in touch with Marissa Mayer? Let's yeah. Push me right yeah. So um, it was a lot, a large part because of this sort of um, network we built up. So Parker, was actually Marissa Mayer's, uh, one of his, her students back when they were both at Stanford. Um, and uh, she also, I think, hired him when they went to Google. So they had a built up a relationship for a while. Um, and as soon as we built this out, um, he introduced us to Marissa because she um, obviously is from Stanford. Um, she was a TA um, when she was there. Um, and she, he thought that you know, she may be interested in a platform like this and potentially helping us. Um, so he introduced us. We actually got to meet her, which was insane. We sat down with her, um, and you know, within 15 minutes, she was like, you know, I'd really love to be part of your round and um, be an angel investor. So uh, I think for us, we really resonated with her because she went, she went to Stanford. She saw a lot of the problems that we were trying to solve, um, and we were lucky enough to have an investor that had a relationship with a big name like her. So I think that for us helped a lot because I mean. It helps with getting ambassadors and employees. Um, you know, we have a big name like Marissa Mayer, but also we ask her for product advice, which is really cool. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, what, what questions did she ask? What was that pitch meeting like? I mean, she seems, I've never met her. I've, I've seen her speak quite a few times. She seems just, you know, lightning smart. So, so what was that meeting like? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a very standard meeting. I think at first, you know, she asked us about the product. So we gave her a little demo. Uh, we kind of contextualized it to our similarities. Like she was, you know, a CS teacher at Stanford. I'm a teaching assistant at Stanford now. So, uh, you know, I kind of like talked a little bit about how it helps some of my section E's, things like that. Uh, you know, after that, like Akshay said, it didn't take her long. I think in the first 15 min minutes, she uh, decided that she was really interested. So from there, we actually just ended up chatting for the next two hours about uh, you know, it's like r random things that we didn't necessarily need to, need to think about like right now, but uh, issues that could come up in the future. And she shared a lot about her previous experiences, you know, developing one of the first social networks, which was Orkut, uh, who was actually, which was named after one of her good friends. Uh, so, you know, we got a lot of cool uh, insight on, on her past and social networks in general. And it was just a great conversation. We learned a lot from her. And uh, that's the sort of stuff that we apply every day when we're building Alma. No, that's great. That's great. And going forward, I mean, obviously having her is a great brand reputation for recruiting campus ambassadors, but can, did you establish anything like, can we have quarterly meetings? I'm just trying to think, the question is really, how will you leverage her in, in the future beyond just the name uh, on the website? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I think the nice thing is, so, I mean, Marissa right now is, has moved on from Yahoo, obviously, and has a little bit of time on her hands. So what's she doing? That, these She's currently running, uh, she does a little bit of angel investing. I think she's running something called Lumi Labs. Okay. That has, it does some investing as well. Um, but yeah, she has some time and she basically told us, you know, like send over screenshots. Like I'd love to give you advice on the direction of the product. Um, and yeah, as we're going to launch at USC and Cal, we're going to um, set up a meeting with her as well to talk about our expansion strategy in the next couple of weeks. Um, but it's really nice to have someone who had done, has done so much, but now has time on their hands. And I think that was a big criteria 
for us when raising a round, finding investors that did want to put time into us because we are first time founders and we want to, you know, learn as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, great. And so I guess after you got, you know, Norwest and Marissa on board, did the others fall in line pretty quick? Or <laughs> yeah, it actually, yeah, it didn't take us too long. Uh, we did, you know, go to a lot of meetings and that's just because we wanted to explore our options, but we were definitely really oversubscribed at the end of, uh, you know, our funding period. Uh, a lot of people wanted to get in the round and uh, we could only, you know, take so many spots. Uh, but yeah, I think like at the end of the day, like it didn't take us long to get those investments, but we did, we were pretty picky about who we wanted to choose in terms of, like Akshay said, uh, the amount of time that they had to offer and, you know, how closely they related to the product. Hey, let's drill on that or touch on that a little deeper. So when you're oversubscribed, great place to be, you know, as a founder and you have the luxury of picking, what were some other ways you're filtering who to let in? So how much time they have? Can they be yeah. helpful? What else? Anything else? For sure. Yeah. I think um, the other really big criteria for us was sort of their past experience and the sort of portfolio companies that they had helped. Um, so for example, uh, with Parker, the reason why we ended up committing to this round was because he was the former VP of product at LinkedIn. Uh, he had a ton of product experience and it already given us a lot of advice, like even before he invested in our round and showed that he had a commitment to helping us succeed, you know, for better or for worse. Um, but he came in with that experience with a consumer social product that he succeeded. Um, I think that sort of idea carried over with every other person we brought in the round. So um, with, you know, VB goal, um, he's also early growth at LinkedIn. And we really liked him because uh, we talked to him beforehand about just like, how do we structure, you know, emails to get people to open it? How do we structure our landing page to get people to sign up? Just like a lot of small things um, that, I mean, when you're first building things out, um, as a first time founder, you don't think about, but you have these people who've done it over and over and over again. Um, and we really want investors who had that experience, um, before bringing them in the round. Cool. What were you guys, when you were, you know, rewind a little bit. So when you were pitching Parker and, and Marissa and these guys, what were you actually pitching? How much of the product was live or was this all more conceptual or, or what? Yeah, so we had a live product running and our metrics were pretty decent at the time. I think uh, we had, so we launched at Stanford and we had around uh, one, one fourth of the undergraduate population, which is like 2000 students using our platform and 60% of them were coming back week after week. So our metrics were looking pretty good. And obviously, you know, there was a lot of work for us to do. Uh, and I think in terms of pitching the product, a lot of it is really pitching the vision for where you think it'll go. Uh, the product, you know, at that sort of an early stage, it's really hard to quantify necessarily. But uh, what Akshay and I really focused on was showing the real need, the, the idea that like students really want a college exclusive social network. And, you know, kind of like talking about what the product can look like once we launch it to other schools, once we include more dynamic content. And I think a lot of it really has to do with uh, resonating with our vision. And that's the sort of connection that we drew with our investors. Did you launch last fall at Stanford or the prior year? So we, we launched last fall. I'd say we officially really launched this year in January. But in the fall, we were actually like getting a lot of users on board before our, you know, our big launch in January. Um, so I guess that gives us, yeah, I, as I said, seven months we've been up. Um, but I mean, do that, even with that first launch, um, at Stanford, uh, because I had that relationship with Parker, we were asking him for advice from the beginning, even before he was part of the round. Um, so we, you know, we had a really good relationship with this person that we trusted a lot before we committed. Yeah. Yeah. No, cool. Any, did you have any concern when, you know, sometimes there's always the signaling risk when a huge fund like Norwest puts in a little money. Uh, if they don't obviously come into the next round, that's a big, you know, red flag. Did you have any concern about that? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Obviously that's a, you know, that's a big issue. And uh, you know, at first we were pretty cautious about that. Like we didn't just jump into taking the seed round just because we were given the offer. I think it took us a lot of time to really consider who we were working with. Uh, even like our schedules, because we're rising seniors, you know, how feasible it would be for us to spend a lot of time working on this product, assembling a solid team so that, you know, we can keep iterating and keep developing even though we're still in school. Uh, and once we figured out a lot of those missing components, we realized that, you know, our relationship with Parker was strong. Uh, he really supported us. 
uh, you know, more than just founders as students, as people. We had a great relationship there and, uh, you know, we trust Parker. <laughs> and yeah, I think uh, we were pretty confident in our ability to keep growing and expanding the product. So we don't think that the signaling risk will be much of an issue. Awesome. Um, I mean, 25, I think you said 25% or a quarter of the Stanford student that's amazing. Is that baked in virality? This isn't, this podcast isn't really growth hacks, but I'd love to hear how, how it spreads so quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, we didn't actually spend any money on acquiring customers. I mean, cause we didn't really have money at the time when we launched. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I think we did some organic things to sort of get students to start using it. So we went to professors um, initially and they, they really liked the product. It builds communities in their classrooms. So they would talk about it in their class. Um, we went to RAs. Um, they would talk about it. Uh, and we did some like clever things too to sort of get people organically. So um, we like scraped all of Stanford's emails. Um, and whenever someone looked, you could look up anyone on our platform and if they didn't exist on the platform, it would email the user um, saying, hey, like someone looked you up, you should sign up. So we did like, you know, a little couple of clever things. And I think as we go to other schools, we'll keep experimenting with getting users organically. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um... Right. On. And you, it's amazing. You guys are still students. Any thought of dropping out and uh, just going in all the, all the way? You're going to graduate. Your parents would kill you if you dropped out now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everyone asks us that question and I think uh, we're so close to finishing our degrees. We have one year left and uh, not that many like tough classes. So I think we're going to, we're going to finish and Parker is really supportive of that. Our parents want us to finish. We want to finish too. So that's probably going to be the road of action now. <laughs> That's good. Um, cool. So you raised a million bucks. Do you know what kind of runway? Is that like 12, 18 months? How, how long do you uh, have? Yeah, like, uh, so yeah about 12, 18. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So about 12 to 18 months. Um, we anticipate at the rate we're going, maybe we'll have to raise again um, in the fall of 2019. Um, and I mean, it gives us a lot of runway to just hire people. So, I mean, with the money we have, we've been able to get like the best of the best. We brought on two of our close friends from Stanford. Um, we hired a designer. Um, who has been building social networks for like 15 years. Um, and we imagine as we keep growing, you know, the money will go towards getting some more campus ambassadors and hiring some more engineering talent because we're trying to launch to 300,000 students by the end of the summer. Yeah. Do you see any, I, I guess, you know, when you were talking about taking this around to teachers and professors and stuff like that, is there not a, a something in place already beyond, you know, Facebook and Snapchat and stuff like that. Is there, is there much comp competition for what you're doing? Or are you guys pretty open territory here? Yeah. I mean, um, obviously there are always competitors of some sort. So, you know, I don't think there's really much that necessarily aligns exactly with what we're doing, but there are a lot of organizations that have a grasp of, you know, the college campus, a lot of the student bodies at several different schools. And a lot of these platforms are very educational focused. They focus on administrators uh, and they put students second, which is why, you know, we wanted to be that first platform that goes into a university and says, hey, we're going to build this from the ground up uh, for the students uh, to, you know, communicate with other students and not necessarily for administrators to communicate with students. So, yeah, I think, you know, and at the end of the day, obviously, when you build any sort of social media, you're uh, you're kind of like always competing with Facebook or Snapchat or anything else that sucks up people's time. Uh, so, yeah, we think that if we can provide enough value for college students and show them that, you know, this is something they should be spending their time on and maybe even make their lives easier than some of the other platforms they use then i think we can uh continue to grow and get a large portion of college students across the nation cool have you started thinking about that next round yet or or i mean the ink is barely dry on this last one so <laughs> um, yeah i mean we i mean we've been keeping track of our burn rate and where we're going and how we're hiring um but i mean we have enough money to last us uh, a good amount of time as we mentioned like till at least fall of next year so we haven't thought about raising yet. We're just trying to build a product that works. <laughs> yeah, totally. I guess, you know, you prove the model at a couple more schools and then do you start to think about like big rounds? I mean, again, maybe you're not thinking about that yet, but that's, is that a path you think is probable? Yeah. I mean, I think our next round should essentially be a pretty big round. Uh, if we're, you know, growing at the rate that we anticipate ourselves growing, uh, Right now, you know, we're pretty busy with a lot of different things and it's hard for us to, you know, like keep thinking 
about these future rounds, especially because we've never been in this situation before. Uh, but I mean, I think a lot of the advice people have given us is just, you know, focus on building a good product, focus on getting users. And then I think a lot of those other things will come naturally if people really yeah. love our product. Cool. All right. I'll let you get back to it. You guys are both students and entrepreneurs, so I won't take up too much of your time. Any, any, you know, tips or, or advice you'd give maybe other student founders or anything you would do differently if you were doing this all over again? Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think um, at least when we were pitching initially, we, we focused a lot on the smaller details. We would talk about, you know, like, you know, our numbers and like, students at Stanford and what they were thinking about it. Um, but I think as we start pitching more and more, we realized the things that people were more interested in were, was the vision. Like, where were we going to go if we were going to really get to every university? Where were we going to be in five years? Um, and I think, you know, as an, an investor, I mean, that's really what you care about, right? You're buying into this vision, you're buying into the founders and we were yeah. selling, you know, we were selling ourselves at the end of the day more than the actual product because it really at the end of the day, I think the lesson I got was that good founders will, figure it out. You know, they will find a product that works. Maybe this isn't it, but there's something here. Um, and they'll pivot and um, eventually, you know, find something that a lot of people want to use. And I think when we start pitching towards the end, we focus a lot on ourselves as founders and why we were the best team to, you know, you know, find this vision and make it work. Cool. Good stuff. All right, guys, I think that's it. Um, anything you want to plug any call to action, I guess, campus investors, what are you recruiting for? Or, you know, yeah, I mean, we're more than happy to get any interest from college students. Uh, you know, if you're interested in this platform, if you want to help support the cause, then feel free to apply for, you know, a campus ambassador position or feel free to email team at almacampus.com if you have any questions or want to bring this to your campus. But other than that, I think uh, we're pretty set for now. Yeah, and our website is almacampus.com. So feel free to visit it. Awesome. Almacampus.com. Sounds good, guys. Thanks so much. Best of luck. And uh, I'll love to interview you again after your next round. We'll see how things have changed. It'll be interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Right. Thanks, Nathan. Cool, guys. Appreciate Cheers. Oh, sweet.